of any back row, right? If we don't have any back row, uh, then what is uh, the formula? So without the back row, uh, V max is uh, simply root of mu R G, right? But if we have a back row, so there are uh, two steps. One is considering the Right, so one is considering the uh, considering this uh, friction, and the other one is uh, without uh, the friction. So this is R G. Right, this is uh, R G then mu plus tan theta, and then one minus mu tan. So this is uh, the maximum speed in which we have this uh, coefficient of uh, friction. But if we uh, if want to calculate the optimum speed, so this was uh, Rg tan theta, right? In this case, you don't have any uh, friction. These things are we discussed, right? So which formula in these three things, uh, which formula we have to use? Can you guys uh, tell me? 60 second uh, question. What is the formula that we have to use? Yes, guys. Quickly tell me and then we have to get the question. Right. So, yes, guys. So, you see that. Uh, a car of negotiates a bank of radius 90 meter on a frictionless road. So this thing is zero. Mu is zero. So we have to find out the optimum speed because this is a bank. So in bank road only we don't have, this is not uh, the case of bank road. In bank road we have uh, this, right, these two scenarios. But uh, we have this mu is zero. So this would be RG tan theta. So how much is this? R is they have said that uh, mass negotiates the bank load of radius 90 meter and uh, G is 10, 10 or 45, that is 1. So root 900, so this is uh, 30 meter per second. Right, this is the direct question. So we have to only remember the formula. Right. Okay, so then we have again this uh, 65th question. So again, this is uh, without the back. 65th is uh, simply V max, and that is uh, V mark. So this would be Q is uh, how much is this? 0 0.4. R is uh, how much? Radius 30 meter and G is 10. So how much is uh, this? This is 12. So 12 into 10, that is uh, 120. And uh, how much is uh, Then we have to find out uh, the root of this thing. So this is uh, 4 and uh, 30, right? And then uh, how much is this thing? So 15 to 10. Okay, so 2 into 3 into 5. So this root 30 is uh, how much? So this is uh, 2 to 30. And this would be around uh, how much is root one point five? Right? One point five. That's fine. One twenty ten point nine five. Right. So this is ten point nine. So this is uh, the which answer is matching. So ten point eight. This is nearly 10.95, so this would be it. So these were the two questions I wanted to discuss, right? And uh, any doubt in these ones? Guys, any question in these two questions? Any doubt in these two? Yes, guys. Any doubts that you guys have? then let's uh, talk about the next next chapter so let's uh, yeah let's talk about uh, the next chapter and uh, what we are going to discuss in this uh, next chapter right 
So I will write it here, but uh, I will write, I will give a brief uh, review of uh, this chapter. So what we are going to study in this uh, chapter. So as the chapter uh, explains, so this chapter is about So this chapter is uh, about uh, world, energy, power, right? So, and then in the last you have a uh, prediction. So what we will study in this chapter? First, we will study that what is work done, right? So first thing that we will study is what is work done. And uh, we define the work done through what? In the previous chapter, what is the thing that we didn't understand? The previous chapter, we study about uh, a physical quantity, very important physical quantity. And that thing we will use in here. Can you guys tell what was the physical quantity that we talked about in the previous chapter? Because that quantity is associated with this uh, thing with this word. Can you guys tell me? Oh yeah, it's the start time, I'll be back in five minutes, right? I'll be back in uh, five minutes. And in the meanwhile, you guys think about it, that uh, what is the physical quantity associated with one? Because from that, we'll define uh, the word. Yeah, I'll be back in a moment, guys.
Yes, uh, guys. Yeah. Okay, so what we were uh, discussing. So we were discussing that what were, what is what. And in the previous chapter, we extensively talked about uh, one important quantity that was force. Right, so we understood the idea of force. So there were gravitational force, there were uh, spring force, there were different kinds of normal reaction and uh, every other kind of uh, force, right? So due to these forces, uh, the, there would be work, some work done, right? If these forces are displacing the body at some distance, so then it would be said that it is a work. And uh, with this force, we define the work, right? So this uh, can be of two types. If you have a force, which is, which is uh, uniform, right? Then you have a then you have this uh, work done, which is defined as uh, F dot S, and this is uh, F D or F S cos D. Right, and then you have a force which is uh, a variable. So you have a variable force. Right, you have a variable force. Then due to this variable force, what would be the work? So work done would be simply integration of F D S cos theta, right, or F dot D S from uh, S1 to S2. So distance one to distance two. And then the third thing is that you have a parametric form of, uh, so you have a parametric form of the force. So this is parametric, which means that uh, F as function of T would be given. So in this case, what would be your work done? So this is uh, F dx, we can write it as dt by dt. So then it changes to fv and uh, dt. So this would be work done if you have uh, the force which is parametric in nature. So these kind of uh, things are there for the uh, work done, right? Is it uh, clear? And we'll do uh, different kinds of question uh, using these uh, so this is the first thing about uh, work done. And from this work done, we define uh, the energies and all those, right? So is it, uh, is it clear, guys? Okay, so, right, I guess here I'm as, uh, yeah. So, so with these uh, forces, we define the work, right? And then uh, we see that, the work done can be negative, positive, or zero. So if cos theta is uh, theta is 90, or if cos theta is zero, then work done is zero. If cos theta is negative, then work done is negative. If cos theta is positive, then work done is positive. So there can be three scenarios uh, with this uh, definition, right? And then we have uh, energy. Right, so, and then we have uh, energy and specifically we are talking about mechanical energy. So this mechanical energy is of uh, two types. One is uh, the virtue of motion, right? By virtue of motion, that is kinetic energy. And the second one comes due to the conservative force. So due to conservative for this term, and this is called the potential. So if you have a conservative force, then you would have the potential. Right, so this kinetic energy is uh, fixed, and we know that this is half mv square. But uh, potential energy, you can have different kinds of potential energy. One is gravitational potential energy, And then you have uh, spring potential energy. 
So the gravitational potential energy is how much? That is simply mgh. And spring uh, potential energy is how much? That is half kx square. So these are the things uh, that we are doing, right? And uh, yeah, this this potential energy doesn't uh, depend upon the path. So whatever path you take, let's uh, take an example of. Uh, so let's say gravitational potential. So if you have this object and then you just uh, take this object at this point, and then this is at H distance and you are working against the uh, gravity. So then your work, uh, then your gravitational potential energy, this would be simply empty. Right. And uh, your work done, this would be minus of uh, potential energy that is minus of it. So work done is minus of change in potential. Right. And uh, similarly, let's say if you have this inclined plane, this height is uh, H, and then you are taking the object from here to here. Right. Then again, your uh, potential energy, this would again be empty. So this doesn't change that what is the path you are taking, right? And uh, then let's say you are taking this object from uh, this point. At uh, this height, again, this is H and uh, this is, uh, let's say, the uh, starting, let's say. So again, you take this object from here to here, again, the potential energy would be simply minus energy. The work done would be minus Right. So this is the idea of gravitational potential energy. This doesn't depend upon the path. And uh, that is why this is uh, the cause of the conservative so whenever you have a conservative, conservative force, then uh, your potential energy, then this concept will arise, right? Then this concept will arise, and that would be the potential energy. And uh, due to the conservative force, the energy, potential energy is defined as, or the force is defined as minus du by dr, right? Where this u is potential. So this is both conservative force. Right. So this is the uh, idea of work energy, right? So we have studied work, we have studied energy, and then uh, we know that what is the relation between, we know that uh, relation between kinetic energy and uh, momentum, right? So what is the relation between kinetic energy and momentum? Any of you guys uh, remember? I believe what this is. So, yes. The relation between uh, kinetic energy and potential energy. Do you guys uh, remember? So relation between kinetic energy and potential energy is that kinetic energy is P square by 2. So this is how we write uh, right? And whatever point you guys uh, want to note it down, because these things you guys have already have, right? So side by side you guys can note it down, and if you want to note some uh, points, then you can also tell Right? So these things you have to remember in uh, in work energy and then we have this uh, equilibrium right so what is the equilibrium condition what is this uh, equilibrium so we have uh, three kinds of equilibrium 
One is called uh, stable equilibrium. The other one is uh, unstable uh, equilibrium. And then you have uh, neutral uh, equilibrium. Right. So what is a stable equilibrium? So if you have uh, this thing, right? If you have this kind of surface and the object is uh, in here. So if you take this object in here, it will go in here and then it will come back again. So this kind of uh, equilibrium is called uh, stable equilibrium. What is unstable equilibrium? So if we have the object in this uh, part, right? So at this part, your uh, equilibrium is called unstable equilibrium. So because if you bring this thing in uh, here, right, then it will go down, it will not come back. So that equilibrium is called uh, unstable equilibrium. And neutral equilibrium that is that it will remain always uh, right. So if we have this kind of part. So this is uh, if the object is in. So it will remain in here, uh, right? If you remove this thing, so it will uh, be. So this kind of uh, equilibrium is called neutral equilibrium, right? And how do we mathematically represent it? So we represent uh, this thing by double differentiation, right? Do you guys uh, remember the double differentiation? So equilibrium is uh, this, right? So I wanted to yes. do some. Yeah, double differentiation, if you guys remember that, right? Okay, so these are uh, the things. And uh, this is defined by this double differentiation, right? So let me write uh, these conditions here. So if you have uh, some function, potential energy is given, and you find out that what is the d square u by dr square. And if it is greater than zero, so that would be called uh, stable equation. If it is uh, d square by u by dr square, this is uh, less than zero, right? So this would be called the unstable equilibrium. And for this case, we have to only find out uh, the first differentiation. So if your du by dr is zero, then this would be called a neutral equilibrium. So these are the condition three types of equilibrium that. Uh, all these questions. So you guys have to just uh, remember these. Okay, any doubt, any question with uh, these uh, concepts? We have studied work, we have studied energy, and we have studied this uh, equilibrium condition. So this equilibrium arises due to this potential, right? So that is defined by this potential. Any doubt, guys? Any question up to this point? No, sir. Good. And then the next concept is, uh, yeah, if you guys uh, want to note any of these things down, then please, uh, right? I will put uh, the screen here. Okay, so the next uh, topic is, uh, right, next topic is, what happened? So the next topic is, we have talked about work, we have talked about energy. So next topic is uh, work, energy theory. And uh, what is that? So this is uh, the very important uh, theorem, right? This is the very important uh, theorem. So it says that uh, Right. It says that the work done by an object would be equal to change in kinetic energy. So this is work energy theory. Right. And uh, this translates into uh, the conservation of mechanical energy because uh, we know that, right, if the force is conservative,
then we know that uh, W is minus delta U, right? So then this uh, would uh, this would become uh, how much? So if we compare these uh, two equations, so it will be delta K equals to minus delta U. So you will get uh, the initial uh, energy. That would be equal to finite energy using uh, these uh, two things, right? So this would be what? This is K final minus K initial. This is minus of Q final minus U initial. So you will get uh, K final minus U initial. You will get minus U final plus U initial. So you put uh, U in the left hand side. So K final plus U final. This is U initial plus uh, K initial, right? Oh, where is this uh, K initial? Okay. So this is initial energy, this is uh, final energy. So you will have, you will have mechanical energy is conserved for the case of this uh, conservative force. But if the forces are uh, dissipative, right, some amount of energy is being dissipated, then in that case, your uh, work energy theorem would be uh, work energy theorem or total work done, right? So total work done, that would be always true, right? So total work done, this would be change in kind. So this is uh, applied in it, right? And this W total would consist of uh, the conservative force and then uh, dissipative force. So all the things would be there, right? If it is dissipative, then this work done would be negative. So you guys have to, right? This, uh, this is uh, an important thing. If you are calculating this uh, W dissipative, then you have to take this thing positive. But if this W dissipative is given, then you have to consider that this is negative. This is the sign convention that people use. So this is a very important relation and it is very useful in different scenarios. So this relation is the most important uh, relation. And uh, so we have studied about what? We have studied about energy. We have studied about equilibrium. We have studied about work energy theorem. And uh, the next topic is uh, the next topic is power. Power is simply rate of doing work. T W is uh, F T X. So and uh, if we write it in uh, vector form, so this is F dot T X. Right. So this would be F dot uh, V. So power is Fp, right? This is power and uh, if we have uh, different scenarios of forces again, so then this would be different, right? So this is work energy power. This is the chapter that uh, we'll discuss in this uh, class, right? So work energy power we have discussed and then we have uh, collisions, right? Then we have uh, collision. So the next uh, last topic in this chapter is uh, collision. And in collision, we have uh, two kinds of uh, collision. One is, uh, or maybe there are uh, three kinds. So elastic, and then we have perfectly inelastic. And then we have uh, inelastic, right? So in elastic collision, two things are uh, conserved. Your momentum is conserved. Your kinetic energy is conserved. It's not up to right? what happens. So kinetic energy is conserved in perfectly in a, in elastic collision. What happens? Momentum is conserved, right? And uh, kinetic energy is uh, not conserved. 
but uh, the third scenario is there because the uh, final velocity is c because in perfectly in elastic collision they collide and they stick together and then they move. so they stuck together and then they they move. so that is uh, the perfectly in elastic and this is in this one also momentum is conserved but uh, kinetic energy is not conserved but uh, this thing is not there so they are not uh, sticking together and they move in different ways so there is a quantity which defines the kinds of uh, collision do you guys uh, remember that what is that quantity What is the quantity which defines the types of collision? Yes, guys. What is the what is the quantity that defines the types of collision? So that is this one is important. This is called coefficient of. This T T B. This is represented by E, and uh, its value is uh, one. So whenever you say, uh, let me write, uh, let me define this thing first. So how it is uh, defined? So it is uh, defined as. the mod of uh, the change in velocity after collision and uh, change in velocity change in and velocity before collision so what is uh, that so we have let's say these two objects they are moving let's say this is u1 this is u2 they collide and uh, then they move with uh, different speeds so this is uh, v1 and this is uh, v2 so they have a uh, different speed so change in uh, velocity that would be v2 minus uh, v1 and let me just write it in this way so v2 minus v1 divided by u1 minus u2. so that is uh, your coefficient of restitution right and uh, this value this value is 1 for uh, elastic collision this value is uh, 0 for what kind of uh, collision for what kind of collision this would be 0 can you guys tell so for uh, perfectly inelastic collision this is uh, and then this is between 0 and 1 uh, for uh, inelastic collision. so between 0 and 1 uh, for in elastic so that is uh, the idea of uh, so this is the whole chapter that is uh, right and uh, if you guys have any doubt in any of these topics then uh, please tell so now we'll do the questions and then we'll try to understand these uh, right and uh, yeah so okay so these things uh, we have discussed right
all these things we have uh, discussed and they were derivation which I have not uh, discussed, right? So derivation is not important. I have not talked about uh, derivations, but uh, we'll do some uh, questions, right? We'll do some uh, questions. Yeah, so this is a parametric form, uh, right? The equation. Uh, and uh, what was the other thing? Okay, work energy theorem we have also discussed. So this was this is this is the question that we'll discuss. Equilibrium we have also discussed, right? And then we have uh, yeah. So mechanical energy conservation of mechanical energy we have done for non-conservative force we have this thing, and uh, collision we have uh, right. So we have uh, discussed all these. Uh, Coefficient of restitution we have discussed, and uh, so velocity is uh, this thing. Uh, this you guys have to remember, but uh, yeah, so these are uh, the things that you have. And there is one more important thing is that uh, if you have uh, elastic collision in two dimension, so these two angles are perpendicular. These two the angles are perpendicular and that thing we have to Okay, then yeah, so this is uh, so let's do some questions and uh, yeah, if we will need any other question then Okay, so these are the questions that we have to so Let's discuss uh, the first one. Let's discuss the simplest one Right, so why do you think Okay, can I change the color of this? Yeah. Yeah, so this is. Okay, so this is the first question, right? A force acts on a body due to which it, it uh, displaces from A to B. Calculate the work done. So this is the simplest uh, question that we have, right? So let's uh, do this uh, question. So let me just uh, break this thing in. Uh, let me just copy this thing, and then let's bring it. Uh, Okay, so we have uh, this question, and we know that what is uh, the displacement. So we have to just only find out uh, the work done, and that is F dot uh, S. So we have to find out the displacement, right? What is the displacement? This is simply uh, what is this uh, vector R B minus uh, R A, right? What is uh, Rb? Rb is uh, simply 5i and uh, 4j and uh, 2k. And then what is uh, Ra? So this is uh, 2i plus 3j plus uh, k. So these are the two uh, position vectors, and then we can find out the displacement. So, Rb minus Rb. 
what is this thing? That is the uh, 3i plus j plus uh, kn. And then we have to find out uh, the dot product of this. So f dot s. How much is uh, this thing? So we have a uh, force which is i plus uh, 2j plus 3k dot 3i plus uh, j plus uh, k. So how much would be this? So this is i dot i that is 3 plus 2 into 1 into 3 into 1 uh, 3. So 3 to 5, 3, 8, 8, uh, 8. So this would be the button. Is it uh, clear guys? Yes. Good sir. Yeah, so quickly note this thing uh, down and then we will do the next question, right? Next, because this was a uniform force, right? That thing we already don't uh, discuss that why, how we calculate the work done if we have uniform force. Yeah, who's got connected? Uh, so, we have got this picture. Yes, Alia, whenever you have noted, just say. One. Done, sir. Yeah, good. So, now let us uh, do the next question, right? What is uh, the next question? You have uh, the same question, right? So R1 is given, R2 is given, find the bottom. So this is a direct question, right? Uh, this I will not uh, discuss because R1 is given, R2 is given. So you have to find out displacement. That would be R2 minus R1. So this thing is already uh, done. So we'll uh, skip this. Now let's find out uh, this thing, right? So let's find out uh, this. We have uh, this vector. Find work done by external agent for first one second, right? So for well, first one second, we have to find out what is uh, the work done. So that would be how much? Okay, let's uh, find that out. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the question. Yeah, and this is in the parametric form. So this question is in uh, parametric, right? So how do we do this uh, question? So we know that what is uh, x, right? X is given, which is uh, t cube by t. So from x, we can calculate uh, what is uh, velocity. That would be how much? That would be dx by dt. Right, so this is uh, how much? This is uh, 3, t square by 3. So this cancels and we have t square. And then we can also calculate uh, the acceleration, right? So what is the acceleration? That is dp by dt. So V is T square, so that would be D of T square by T. This is simply 2 T. So we have acceleration, we have uh, velocity, right? And we have mass also. So from mass, we can calculate what is uh, the force. 
right so force would be simply mass into acceleration so how much is uh, so mass is 1 kg acceleration is 2t so this is the uh, 2t right now we have force we have velocity and what did we discuss right for the parametric form what the parametric form work done was the uh, integration of f v dt and uh, we have already uh, so we already know the limits first one second so from uh, initial point from start to let's say one second right that is uh, the term. so then what would be the work done f is uh, how much t and uh, P is t square and then uh, dt. So, what will be this thing? This is 0 to 1. So, q is taken outside and then this is t q dt. So, this is, would be how much? This is 2 t 4 by 4 and the limit is uh, 1 to 0. So, uh, this part is cancelled. 1 by 2 is outside. And uh, we have to first uh, put this is t4 1 to 0. So if we put uh, t equal to 1, so 1 4 minus 0 4. So this would be 1. So this would be half. So uh, we have to find out what comes that is half. Right. This would be the 1. So whenever you have uh, the force in the parametric form, or whatever thing is in the parametric form, then you have to. If it is uh, clear, you guys note it down. And if you guys have any doubt, please tell. Quickly note this thing down, guys. Yeah, we know you guys have uh, pictures. Yes, sir. Uh, noted, guys. Yes, guys. Uh, okay. Answer. Yeah. Okay. So now let us. This was, this was work done due to uniform force. I J K that was given. This is work done due to non uniform force. Right. And now uh, we have, yeah. So again we have another thing. So displacement. Yeah. This thing we have done. Right. And now let's uh, do this. Right. So momentum of uh, a body increased by 10 percent what is the change in kinetic this is the equation right so momentum of body is increased by 10 percent what is the change in uh, kinetic let's uh, find that out if we have uh,
So we have to use the idea of relation between the momentum and uh, momentum and kinetic energy. Right? So what do we know? We know that kinetic energy is uh, P squared by 2. Right? So we know that we know that uh, kinetic energy is directly proportional to p square. This thing, uh, the mass is same, right? Mass has been fixed because we are not changing mass. So this is simply uh, p square. So I can write uh, in the first case, let's say there are two cases. So in the first case, what do we have? In the case first, Kinetic energy is uh, P square by 2. In the second case, in the increased uh, case, your P prime momentum has been increased by 10%. So this is P plus 10% of uh, P. What is uh, this thing? This is P plus 10 P by 100. So this is... Uh, 10p plus 1p, that is 11p by, or uh, 10. So this is 1.1p. This is the new p, right? So what would be the kinetic energy then? What is the kinetic energy? That would be p prime square by 2m. And this is uh, how much? So this is... Uh, this is uh, how much I will write uh, this thing as uh, yeah so p prime square that is 11 p by 10 square divided by 2 m so if I write this thing so what is uh, this thing this is 121 p square 100 goes downstairs so 2 m I will write uh, 2 m the other side right so let's write 100 and then uh, 2 m so 2m was there, this 10 uh, squared goes downstairs. So p squared by 2m, I know this thing. I know that this is the original kinetic energy. Right. So this is the kinetic energy. And uh, now we know that how much has uh, k changed. Right. So we know that uh, k is this thing. So change in k, what would be that? change in uh, k, that would be k prime minus k. So this is 121 by 100, or let me write it as 1.1. 1 .1. Right, so 1.21 1 k minus of k. So this is uh, 0 0.21 k. That is the change in kinetic energy. Right, this is called uh, delta k. So is it uh, clear? Is it clear? And if I want to calculate the percentage change, so percentage change uh, would be delta K by K into 100. So that would be 0 0.21 K divided by K into 100. So that uh, would be, right. so that would be simply K, K will cancel 100 into 0 0.21, so 21, 21%. That is the percentage change. Right, so we can, uh, so you are changing 10% kinetic energy, but you are getting a change of, uh, you are changing momentum 10%, but you are getting a change of 21% uh, in kinetic energy. So that is how this is uh, related. So I can, uh, can I please uh, leave? Oh, your iftar will happen on uh, at 8 p.m., right? So please wait for 25 minutes, right, uh, Alia? Because we don't have any class. Can you wait for, uh, because, uh, yeah. Otherwise, we won't be able to complete it, right? 
we have four days leave afterwards so the class will happen at uh, or will happen in 13th of april so we have four days leave right oh you are uh, yeah you are where are you so are you in dubai or are you in saudi because saudi uh, sir saudi so saudi is a ksa time right yes sir so uh, your iftar will happen at uh, 8 30 or uh, after 8 30 right what is your iftar time? sir before our iftar is at 6 yeah, yeah oh so 6 but my uh, my right okay so uh, at 6 what is the time iftar time can you tell me Saturday 6 6 so that would be 8 30 right so I will, uh, yeah, I will uh, give you 5.30. Will that be okay? Yes. Okay, sir. 20 minutes. So yeah, please wait for 20 minutes. Then, then we would be able to cover all these uh, things, right? Yeah, sorry, sorry for that because we have to, we have four days, right? And then we will, uh, yeah, so the syllabus will is very vast and then we'll be lagging. That is why I yes I will uh, leave, stop at uh, five minutes. Like, what is the time? So it's five forty uh, or whatever five ten. So twenty minutes uh, later. Yeah, give me twenty minutes. Yeah, please note this thing down and then we will uh, talk about the next uh, set of questions. Please note this thing down. And if you guys have any questions, in this one we have changed the momentum to 10 minutes. Then we find this new momentum. From this new momentum, we have new kinetic energy. New kinetic energy is 121 by 100. We find the change in kinetic energy. So that was uh, the question, right? If it is uh, clear, Please note this thing down. If you guys have noted, just tell me. And then we'll do the next round. So just uh, note this thing down. Whenever you guys have noted, just tell me. Yeah, uh, about it, guys. Yes, guys, uh, noted. Yes. Good. So now let's do the next question. And that would be so. Okay, so this thing we have done, uh, bullet, yeah, this is not important. So this thing uh, we can, uh, this thing that we can but, uh, find a particle where it uh, stops, right? So that is the thing that we have to find. And uh, yeah, this is the question that we have to find out. What is uh, the potential energy? What is the final potential energy? So that would be simply, right. So in this case, potential energy would be simply mg and uh, h1 plus h2 plus uh, h3, so on. So this would be simply mgh. Right, uh, this is the height. So this would be the potential. This is not uh, from the need perspective, so we'll leave this thing. Right, uh, but the idea of this question is that, uh, yeah, the idea of this, this question is that, let's say we have this object in here, this is x distance, right? And uh, if this is moving in this direction, so we have friction in this direction. 
so there are two uh, forces which are acting so work done would be change in kinetic energy and uh, one work done would be due to this uh, mg so one work work done would be due to this uh, mg and uh, x and the other work done would be due to this uh, frictional force and that would be mu and uh, n right and mu n and uh, x so this would be the thing, right oh so this is uh, mg and uh, you can write this thing as uh, h that would be g, g. right and this is uh, k final minus k h. and we know that uh, this k final is zero because it is stopping so this is uh, zero and uh, this is zero and this is half m square. This is half m expression, but we, yeah, this is not uh, that important. Okay, but uh, yeah, if we have, right, uh, if we have this uh, question. So this is uh, the question and uh, we want to calculate we want to calculate uh, the what is the potential energy of the object at this point, right? So we want to find out uh, the potential energy, and uh, there are two scenarios. So one is that we are measuring this in uh, reference one. We are measuring this thing in reference uh, two. Right. In reference one, so this is reference uh, one. From here we are measuring. This is reference two. From here we are uh, measuring. So if we are measuring from uh, top to bottom, so this would be the height. And uh, what is this uh, height? Can you guys tell me? And if we are measuring from uh, bottom to upwards, so this would be the height. Right. So for from reference one, from reference one, potential energy is simply because we are going downward, so that would be minus of mgh one. If we are going upward, so that would be mgh. Can you guys tell me what is h one? This total length is l. This is cos theta, so that would be y bound. What would be this? What would be the perpendicular? Okay. Yeah, you guys have forgotten. So this is, right, this is uh, the cos theta. If this is theta, so this would be cos theta. So H1 is, uh, this is H1, right? And uh, H1 is simply L cos theta. Right, so this would be minus mg L cos theta. But what is H2? What is H2? H2 is uh, the total height. So this length of uh, this thread is L. This total length is L. So that would be L minus this H1. So this would be mg l minus l cos theta this is uh, mg l 1 minus uh, cos theta so we this is how we measure the potential right so this is one and this is uh, two. so we have to keep in this mind that uh, what is the reference that we are taking so if we if we uh, take different reference points then the potential energy Right, so that is uh, the idea. Okay, is it uh, clear, guys? Is it uh, yes. clear? Quickly note this thing down, right? And this question comes in different scenarios, right? This is an important thing. This is the uh, U with reference uh, to this is with reference 
Yeah. Uh, whenever you guys have noted, just uh, just. So ten minutes, uh, right? Give me ten minutes. I'll try to. Yes, uh, noted, guys. Yes, sir. So now let us talk about. So now, uh, yeah, today this pen is working fine. So that is why we are going very fast. But previous two days, it was hanging from Okay. So now uh, we have this uh, question. A particle is released from height S. So we have this particle. This is released from height S. And then... Uh, from the surface of uh, the earth. At a certain height, its kinetic energy is uh, three times its potential energy. The height from the surface of uh, earth and the speed of the particle at the instant are uh, respectively, right? So this is uh, height S, right? And uh, let's say at uh, this point, this is uh, the point at which at a certain height its kinetic energy becomes so in this at this point kinetic energy let's say this is uh, second point this is first point this is second point and let's say this is the third point, right so three times the height from the surface of the earth of uh, the particle that uh, are instant uh, are respectively, right? From height S, uh, from uh, the surface of uh, the, so this is the surface of the earth, right? And this is some height from the surface of uh, the earth. And now this is uh, the final third point. So uh, at this point, let's say at uh, this point, kinetic energy is three times the potential energy. Right, this is let's say two. So that is the thing that uh, right, and uh, the height from the surface of uh, the Earth and uh, the speed of the particle at that instant are uh, respective. So what is this height that we have to find out, and uh, what is uh, the velocity or what is uh, the speed of the particle at uh, this point? So that thing we have to find. Right. So, what is the idea that we have to apply in this question? What is the idea? Okay, give me one bar. Sir?
Okay, so did you guys find out what would be the idea that we will apply? Oh, 